Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today, I'm covering the Game Native emulator again after a long time, and honestly, a lot has changed. In the meantime, this emulator has received some really solid updates, and the latest one, version 6.2, just dropped. With these updates, you can now play Steam games and upload your own PC games too, and the performance I'm getting is actually better than GameHub on my device. In this video, I'll walk you through the full setup, the best settings, and real gameplay tests so you know exactly what to expect before trying it yourself. Let's start with the setup. When you open Game Native Emulator for the first time, it will immediately ask you to log in with Steam. You can do this using your Steam username and password, or you can simply scan the QR code if that's easier for you. I logged in using my username and password, made sure to tick the remember option, and signed in. Once you're logged in, something really cool happens. All the games linked to your Steam account start showing up right on the home screen. In my case, most of the games are demo versions or free titles, but that's perfectly fine for testing performance. One feature I really liked here is the compatibility label. If a game is supported on phones, you'll see a green compatible tag on it. And if the emulator isn't sure, it'll show unknown. Think of it like a traffic signal. Green means go ahead. Unknown means proceed carefully and test it yourself. Now, if you want to add your own PC games manually, it's very simple. Just tap on the plus icon and you'll see a pop-up saying add custom game. Tap OK and your file manager will open. From there, navigate to the folder where your game is installed and select it. Once that's done, the game will appear on your home screen just like your Steam titles. At the bottom of the emulator, you'll you'll see a filters option. Open it, and here you can control what shows up on your homepage. Set the app type to include games, applications, tools, and demos, so everything appears in one place. For layout, you'll see list view, capsule view, and hero view. Personally, capsule view feels the cleanest and easiest to browse, so that's what I recommend. Now let's move into the most important part, the settings. Tap on the Your Steam logo in the top right corner, open settings, and first go into allowed orientations. Here, make sure to uncheck reverse landscape. This avoids awkward screen rotation issues Issues later. Next, open Modify Default Config. In the General section, set the container variant to GlyBC. I've noticed that with Bionic, games tend to crash or get stuck. In Exec Arguments, if you're playing a DirectX 11 game, add Dex 11. For normal games, just leave this untouched. You can set the language to whatever you prefer. For resolution, lower-end devices should reduce it for smoother performance, while higher-end phones can safely stay on default. If you want to monitor performance, turn on the FPS option. For Steam Type, Light or Ultra Light both work fine. Now jump into the graphics section. If you're using a Snapdragon processor, select Turnip or Adreno drivers. Set the graphics driver version to latest. For DX wrapper, use DXVK for normal games and VKD3D for DirectX 11 titles. From my testing, DXVK Async version 1.10.3 gives the best balance of smoothness and stability. If your device is running MediaTek or Exynos, select the Vortec GPU driver and leave everything else on default. And if you're using a Snapdragon 8 Elite processor, choose the dedicated Snapdragon 8 Elite GPU driver set the version to latest, and again, defaults work perfectly fine. After that, head into the emulation section and set the Box64 preset to performance. If you're running a Unity-based game, you can switch to the Unity option instead. If the game crashes or doesn't run properly, try switching the preset to compatibility or stability. Next, go to the controller section and change the input mapper type from standard to X input. This is important because it allows controllers and in-game controls to work properly. Also, make sure to turn on touch screen mode. Next, open the wine section and set memory size to 4 GB. Everything else here can stay as it is. Then scroll to the advanced section, enable all processor affinity options, and set startup selection to aggressive. Once that's done, hit save at the top. Back in the main settings menu, you can also change the app logo. The newer one looks cleaner, so I suggest switching to that. If you're using mobile data, turn off the Wi-Fi only option. Push the speed meter slider all the way up for faster transfers and set the Steam server to your country, or keep it on automatic for better response. Finally, turn off Ask for Tip on startup so you don't see pop-ups every time you launch the emulator. Now let's talk about real gameplay. I'll start with GTA 5, which I added manually. Before launching it, you must edit the container. Tap the menu button, choose edit container, and set the executable path to the game's main exe file. In my case, it was GTA 5 launcher.exe. Save it, go back, and then start the game. At first, GTA 5 always launches in a small window. Once the game fully loads, just go into the in-game settings and switch to full screen. After that, the experience is honestly impressive. I was getting a stable 60 FPS, no stutters, no sudden drops. I completed the first mission entirely, and it felt just like playing on a well-optimized PC emulator setup. Smooth, responsive, and fully playable. After that, I tested Schedule 1 using its demo version from my Steam library. The game loaded properly up to the home screen, but when I created a new game, my screen recording stopped and performance dropped heavily, hovering around 2 to 5 FPS. So clearly, not every game behaves the same, and testing is important. After that, I tried an online multiplayer game 
called Red Match 2. Initially, it kept getting stuck on the loading screen, so I edited the container, switched the Box 64 preset to stability, and changed the DXVK version to 2.4.1. This time, the game launched properly and reached the main screen. However, I couldn't find any online players, and that's because this emulator does not support multiplayer features right now. So to sum it up, if you want to play PC games offline or single-player titles on Android, Game Native Emulator version 6.2 is doing a really good job. Performance is strong, settings are flexible, and compatibility is improving. If you're adding games manually, this emulator works great, but if you're planning to play directly through Steam, I wouldn't recommend it right now. For low graphics or 2D games though, it's definitely worth trying. If this video helped you hit like, subscribe for more emulator updates, and drop your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay creative gamers!